At this point, we've looked at a canonical logic synthesis approach using a, or a combination of logic synthesis approach using a canonical sum of product. And we introduce the notion of a midterm list. So let's do an example where we start with the midterm list and we look at it and derive what the truth table was and then use that to also directly synthesize the logic diagram. So let's take an example where we have three inputs into our system, A, B, and C. And what I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna take the truth table and I'll leave it blank for now. Okay, so I'm gonna take the row, and I got my truth table, and everything's blank in there. But let's just say that I was given F is equal to a midterm list of A comma B comma C, and it said 0, 3, 7. So this is the functional description that we begin with. So it's very simple, it's very compact, but it told us that we had three input variables, A, B, and C, which I list in the, in the truth table in that order, A, B, and C. So A was on the left, B was in the center, C was on the right. And then what I do is I know that I have an output of a one on rows zero, three, and seven, and I know that my output is called F. So that's why I listed F right there. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna come over here and let's put down the input codes now. So I know that I have three inputs, so I have two to the n input codes, so I have eight. Zero, 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 one, zero, one, zero, zero, one, one. One, zero, zero, one, zero, one, 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 zero, one, one, one. And I'll put a little divider line right there just to keep it a little clearer. I'm gonna go ahead and write the row numbers, zero, one, two, three, and then I'll go four, five, six, seven. And then from the midterm list, I know that row zero had an output of a one, row three had an output of a one, and row seven had an output of a one. For all the other rows, they were zero. So I just fill in the zeros. And now I have a truth table, which is the exact same piece of information as the midterm list. So all this was a, was a functional description of a three input combinational logic circuit. Now what we wanna do is let's create the logic diagram and also the logic expression. In fact, let's do the logic expression first. So the logic expression, we can kind of figure, we can kind of derive it from the truth table and the midterm list, uh, depending on which one is easier. Uh, they both give the same information, but let's do it from both just to kind of see how, how you can do that. So what I wanna do is I wanna write a midterm for row zero, okay? So this is row zero right here. So row zero is over here. And I'm gonna, I'll put M zero right here, and then I'll put it beneath it. And what I'm gonna do over here is I'm gonna write M zero right there. Well, we can actually do it directly from the midterm list because I know that a midterm is a product term that has all the variables in it. So that means I have A, and it would B, and it was C. But this midterm only asserts for one and only one input code. So now I put inversions on the input variables in order to make it assert for a particular code. So it needs to assert for code zero. So that means what I need to do is put an inversion on all three of them. So this right here is the min term for row zero. And you can see it over here too, because we've done it like this before, where we say m row zero is a naught, and it would be naught, and it would c naught. And so this is what it ends up being. Okay, so then if we were doing it from the truth table, we would come over here and we would now write the min term for row three. And we can see here that it's 0, 1, 1, so I need A naught, and it would B, and it was C. So that corresponds to min term 3, if I wrote it like this, I would have simply A naught, and it would B, and it was C. And now, finally, we go to row 7, and let's do it from the min term list this time. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have row 7, the min term, and I have a min term which, contain, which is a product term, which contains each variable in the system. So I've got A, and it would B, and it would C. And I need it to assert for one and only one input, input code. So row seven is code 111 when you have three input variables. So that means that I don't need any inversions on this. So this A, B, C will assert for 111 and only 111. So now let's complete our truth table just so we have it. So M7 is equal to A, not, or A and it would B, and it would C. 
So I have my three inputs. I have my three min terms. They're going to produce ones for these three codes and only these three codes. And the way that I form a sum of products or a canonical sum of products is I simply take my min terms and I OR them together. So if I wanted to do that, all I do in a logic expression form is I say f is equal and I OR all three of the product terms together. So right here now I've created my logic expression. So this is the logic expression and it is in a canonical sum of products form. So you have product terms that are summed together. Now I can take that and I can directly create the logic diagram. What I'm going to have is I know that I have an OR gate that is going to have three inputs. It needs an input for each of the three product terms. So let's go ahead and write my OR gate right here. And I'm going to have its outputs F and I'm going to have three inputs. So I'll have one, two, three. And then each of those inputs is going to come from a product term and the product terms are simply those. So let me, let me label them M0, M3, and M7, just so we're straight. Now we have three product terms, or three AND gates, and each of those have three inputs because they are min terms. And so then what we do here is, I'm going to draw it as A, B, C, A, B, C, A, B, C, and I just simply insert the inversions on here. And let's do it this time with you using an inversion bubble. So let's do for min term 0, which is going to be A naught, B naught, C naught. And then over here I'll have A naught, B, C. So that's min term 3. And over here I'll have A, B, C. So this now over here is my logic diagram. And it's perfectly acceptable to draw it the way that I drew it. One thing that you notice right away is that we have A naught right here. We also have A naught right here. So in reality, when you go to implement this, you probably would have A come in, go through an inverter, and then produce A naught, which could then be used by multiple min terms. But we can do that minimization later. It's the most important part is to just get down on, get the logic diagram in its form, in its sum of products form, and then take a look at how, how many gates and how many inputs on the gates it actually used. So that's an ex this is an example of how we can go back and forth between all these equivalent, uh, equivalent descriptions of functionality. And in fact, we now have four unique ways to describe the functionality of a logic circuit, a combination logic circuit. One is the truth table. The second one is the minterm list. The third one is the logic expression. And the fourth one is the logic diagram. So all four of those are equally valid and equivalent to each other when describing the, the behavior of a combinational logic circuit. The logic diagram is the closest to the form that you would actually implement before you manipulated it to try to minimize logic.